Hi, welcome to today's video, which is going to be looking at balancing equations. Now, balancing equations, um, you only get good at really just by practicing. It takes um, just a bit of time for you to start to recognize the patterns and work out easily how you can do it. So what I'm gonna do is go through the four steps for what I normally do for balancing equations. Now this doesn't always work um, for everyone. You need to find kind of what balance works for you. Some people like to do um, tables with left-hand side, right-hand side, working at how many atoms of each there are. That also works as well. It's just once you've got into the habit of it, you can start to probably follow these four steps and do it a bit quicker. So what I firstly do is I always start with balancing my metal atoms. Okay, so I always look if I've got sodium, magnesium, calcium, whatever, and I look at balancing those first. They're normally pretty simple. Then what I do is balance what I call non-common non-metals. What I mean by that is things like sulfur, phosphorus, nitrogen, chlorine, things you don't always see in reactions. Because a lot of reactions will have something like things like carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen in them. So because they're quite common, you leave them to the end. So once you've balanced your non-common non-metal atoms, I would then balance your carbon atoms, okay? And then the final thing is balance the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. There is one more rule that I go by, which will come up, you see, as we go through and do the equations. And that rule is that if I have something I need to balance and it's in two separate things on the same side, I normally leave that, okay? It's quite hard to try and balance up two things on the same side, right, if there's an option for me to balance one thing. And you'll see that particularly when we get to hydrogens and oxygens. So sometimes you might do hydrogens first, sometimes you might do oxygens first, and that simply comes down to which one you've got less of that you need to balance in the actual species. So I'm just gonna start off by uh, doing a couple of simple equations, and then I'll ramp it up to uh, some more complex ones towards the end, all right? Probably get through four, I would say. So I'm gonna show you a uh, first equation, and Best bit of advice I can give it sometimes when you're trying to balance the equation, best way to do it is to do it in pencil, all right, on this piece of paper on the side. And when you're writing it out, leave a bit of room in front of the species that you're using to write your numbers. So the first one I'm gonna do is uh, quite a common chemical equation um, in industry. This is where we take nitrogen gas and we react it with hydrogen gas. See how I'm leaving a gap again in front of each of them. And we get as our product, ammonia, NH3. Okay, so again, what we do is we follow through our process. No non-metal atoms, sorry, sorry, no metal atoms, so we don't do that step. Then we balance our non-common non-metals. So here we've got two nitrogen, all right? We can balance it up. Over here, we've only got one nitrogen. So what we can put is a two at the front of that, okay, to start balancing up our nitrogen atoms. Then we get two carbon atoms, we don't have any of those, balance hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So having a look at our hydrogen over on this side, here we've got two hydrogen, over here we've got two times three is six hydrogens. You always multiply the number out the front by the number of the atoms. And this number here only applies to that particular atom, okay? Unless it's got brackets, which I'll show you in the next one. So now we've got two hydrogen, six hydrogen. We need to make this into six, okay? We only do it by multiplying, so to go two times something to get six, we need to multiply by three, obviously. So we put a three out the front here. Now what we've done is we've balanced up. Nitrogen plus three hydrogens gives us two ammonia over here. Okay, and we just did it by following through the steps. I'll show you another one. So sodium metal is Na, okay? And then that's reacting with water. So I'm gonna go plus, and then I'm gonna leave a little bit of room for numbers out the front of the water, H2O and that gives us sodium hydroxide. Again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of room out the front of the sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, okay? And that also gives us hydrogen gas, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of room out the front of that, okay? So you can see straight away with this equation, we've got one sodium here, two hydrogens here, one oxygen. On this side, we've got one sodium, one oxygen here, another hydrogen, and two hydrogens here. So we've got three hydrogens, and only two here, so this is not a balanced equation. So, like I said, you can draw up a table, all right, and put left-hand side, right-hand side, put each of the different atoms, but what I do is I just follow these steps, and I think if you follow this, you'll find it pretty easily as well. So first thing is balance the metal atoms. Well, the only metal we've got in here is sodium, so there's one sodium here, and there's one sodium on this side, okay? So they balance, we can move on to the next step. Balance your non-common, non-metal atoms. Well, we've only got hydrogen and oxygen, so we can skip that step as well. Then we get to balance our carbon atoms. No carbon atoms. So we can work our way through the steps reasonably quickly here. 
Then we get to balance hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And this is where we're going to get to that step I talked about of working out which one to balance first. So here we've got only one species that has hydrogen and oxygen. Here we've got two species that has hydrogen in there. Okay, so because hydrogen exists in two places on this side, I would start with the oxygen because the oxygen only starts in one. So we've got one oxygen here, one oxygen here. So that balances up. So now what we need to do is get to the hydrogens. Okay, so we've got two hydrogens here and we've got one hydrogen here plus two hydrogen here. So that gives us three hydrogens in total. So three hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. So this is the thing that we want to try and balance. Now the way that we can do that is via multiples. So you look at two and three, and normally you can just multiply them together to get your lowest common multiple, all right? Just double check that is the lowest. But obviously the lowest common multiple of two and three is six, okay? So we want to try and get six hydrogens on each side, okay? Now, if you go through that way, on this one here, Obviously what you want to do is in order to get six hydrogens here, you need to put a three out the front, okay? So if you put a three out the front there, three twos gives you six hydrogens, which works fine. Now you look at balancing out your, um, So what we have is two hydrogens on this side and three hydrogens on this side. So what a lot of people will try and do in this situation is they'll try and use the lowest common multiple. So they'll try and do two and three and try to get to six hydrogens on both sides. That can be a little bit tricky sometimes and run you around in circles as you try to balance up. What I suggest you do is you actually think about that this side is not just three hydrogens, but it's actually one hydrogen and two hydrogens here. So we've still got three in total, but we're actually splitting it up. So now what we wanna try and do is make these all equal, okay? And if we can change this to four hydrogens, and if we can change this one to two hydrogens, yet yeah, keep that one as two hydrogens, okay? Then we will balance up, and you'll see why I did that. So <clears throat> if we can go from two to four, in order to do that, we need to put a two out the front. Now the rule, 100% rule in balancing equations is you only put numbers out the front. You don't change the um, formulae of the substances that you're using. So we don't put make that into H4 or anything like that. We can't change the formulae here. We can only put numbers out the front to balance. So we put a two out the front of this, okay? And we wanna turn this one hydrogen into two hydrogens here, okay? So the only thing we can do is put a two out the front. What that's allowed us to do is now balance up all <coughs> of our hydrogens. So we've now got four hydrogens on both sides. However, what it has done is now um, unbalance our sodiums and our oxygens. So what you might find sometimes as you're doing these is you need to go through and go back to the first step. So <coughs> here, we've now got two sodiums on this side, so we're gonna put a two here. That balances up our metal atoms. We didn't have any non-common non-metals. Then we go to balancing carbons, we don't have those. Then we look at our oxygens. We've got two oxygens here now, and we've got two oxygens here. So we've actually balanced up our equation, all right? Two Na plus two H2O gives two NaOH plus H2, okay? <clears throat> That's just an introduction to balancing an equation. That might have seemed um, maybe like a little bit difficult to get your head around to begin with. You can balance this one with fractions as well. I'm gonna show you an example of that at the end, and maybe you might wanna come back to this one and see how you can balance it with a fraction. But what I'm gonna do is show you a different equation now. And hopefully as we work through this, um, you'll start to get an idea of, um, you know, just following the steps and just trialing an error basically, which is why if you do it with pencil and you can row out the numbers as you balance across, that's a really, really useful thing to do. Next one, as I told you, is going to involve some brackets. So I'm going to look at aluminium bicarbonate. So that's ALHCl. -A 
O3 with a three there. And when we heat that, we're going to get this. Hard to leave a bit of room when you're writing on the board like that. I think you can still see that, that's good. All right, so this equation, the decomposition of aluminium bicarbonate, I'm gonna follow the steps again. So the first step is balance your metal atoms. So here we've got one aluminium, here we've got two aluminiums. So the first thing we're gonna do is put a two out the front. Remember the only thing you can do is put numbers out the front. Then balance your non-common, non-metal atoms. Well, we've only got hydrogen, carbon, oxygen here, so we're not gonna do anything with that. Then balance your carbon atoms, okay? So here's your carbon here. Now this is where you need to take into an account a number of different things. Because there's brackets around the bicarbonate here, that means that there are three carbons. So that three there applies to the carbons, everything inside. So this carbonate is actually made up of three hydrogens, three carbons and nine oxygen, okay? Because that number there multiplies to everything inside, all right? But there's also a two out the front. So we're actually gonna multiply each of these by two as well when we need to work out how many of everything we've got. So two by three gives us six carbons in total. So over here, to balance up the CO2, we need a six out the front of it. All right, and again, I said I haven't left myself a lot of room, sorry. So that needs six CO2 on that side to balance up. So we're using your brackets and multiplying your numbers outside the brackets and then the numbers out the front is very, very important that you get the hang of that. Once we've done our carbon atoms, we're gonna to go to hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Now, if you have a look over this side, this is again where I said sometimes you'll have something that's in lots of places. So you've got oxygen here, oxygen here, oxygen here, three different places for oxygen. So it's gonna be much more simple for us to balance up the hydrogens first. So over here, we said we had three hydrogens times two gives us six hydrogens in total. Here we've got two hydrogens. So to balance that up, we need to put a three out the front of the water here. Now, that now balances up our hydrogens. And hopefully if you've done all these steps, by the time you get to the last one, you'll find that most things probably balance out. So we know here we had two times nine gives us 18 oxygens. So what we wanna do is try and make sure that on this side, we get 18 oxygens. Well, we've got three oxygen here. We've got two oxygen here times two gives us 12 oxygen. And we've got another three oxygen there. Three plus 12 is 15, plus three gives us 18. That matches, okay? And so we've been able to balance up our equation. Two AlHCO33, okay? So two lots of the aluminum bicarbonate gives us aluminum oxide, six carbon dioxide, and three water, okay? So that's a little bit more complex for this one. I'm gonna show you one more. This last one might look a little bit more simple. I'm gonna show you how you can um, actually cheat the system a little bit sometimes if, if you've um, got a good mathematical head on you. So I'm just gonna look at this reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to give us water. And I'm just gonna do, whoops, should leave a bit of room there, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna show you this one. It looks pretty simple. If you go through and do your normal um, calculations, I, I follow your formula over here we've got. Balance your metal atoms, don't have any. Non-metal, non-commons, don't have any of those. Um, balance your carbon atoms, don't have any of those. So we're just going to hydrogen and oxygen. So what you could do is look, two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, okay? So they're balanced. Two oxygens here, one oxygen here. So the normal way you'd balance this up is you'd put a two out the front here to balance up your oxygens, but then you've got four hydrogens here, so you need to put a two out the front. So that is a fairly straight common process that you can do it that way. However, you are allowed to use fractions when balancing chemical equations. So if you look at your hydrogens, we rewrite this again to give H2O, okay? Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. We've got one oxygen here, two oxygens here. So you can do this when you've got species that are called diatomic molecules in particular. So a diatomic molecule is when you've got an atom that is an element that's made up of two atoms of the same, so like oxygen or hydrogen, these are both diatomic molecules. We only want one oxygen from here. Now this oxygen molecule, you gotta remember, is oxygen double bond oxygen, that's what it actually looks like. But we only want one of them. So if we actually do a half in front, a half 
times 2 gives us 1 oxygen. So essentially what we're doing is we're going, we only want this 1 oxygen because we only want 1 oxygen on this side. And that's actually perfectly acceptable to do in chemistry, is to use fractions to balance out. So here, 2, 1, 2, or 1, half, 1. They're actually the same equation. This is just this one halved. Okay? So you're allowed to use fractions in chemistry all right, when you're balancing equations. Hopefully this has been straightforward for you. Um, what I suggest you do is just practice. I'll actually put up um, some equations here that you can just practice balancing, um, see how you go, and if all is, if you've got any questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.